Good afternoon and welcome to MRP Diagnostics, a new approach to discovering surface epitopes with potential antigenic properties using molecular imprinting. Uh, this work was performed by myself and Francesco Canferrotta at MIP Diagnostics. We're really sorry we cannot be here to, for me to present in person. Uh, hopefully this will give you a, a good flavour of what we do uh, with this process and why we think it has you know, amazing potential within the diagnostics industry. MIP Diagnostics, we make nano MIPS, nano molecularly imprinted polymers. These nano MIPS are the product of a combination of patented technology and advanced molecular modeling, whereby we understand monomer template interactions uh, at an exquisite level of detail, such that our nano MIPS have both affinity and shape and are therefore much closer in real terms to antibodies and the binding sites that you would have with an, between antibodies and targets than the traditional imprinted polymers. One of the, the significant benefits though of our process is that we're not limited to 20 amino acids. Uh, there are over 5,000 monomers described in the literature uh, which we can use to, to make imprinted polymers. And for clarity's sake, the function uh, or the, the features that effectively class a molecule as a monomer for us would be a simple carbon-carbon double bond. And there's a selection here in the, the grey band. So our process involves immobilising the, the target template on the solid phase in step one. We then add a combination of monomers in a formulation uh, to give us a pre-polymerization complex where monomers with affinity will associate around uh, the template. We then initiate polymerization, uh, typically using UV light. Uh, because all of this is in a column uh, working on glass beads, we can then elute the unreacted monomers and low affinity nanomips. And in a final step, we can elute uh, the high affinity nanomips, typically at a higher temperature or in an organic solvent such as acetonitrile. And then we can uh, effectively buffer exchange or dialyze, if, if necessary, the nanomips back into a buffer for uh, subsequent assay use or storage or handling. We've taken this a step further and evolved what is an epitope discovery process, where we can take a target protein, expose it to one or more polymerization solutions, and therefore polymerize around parts of that protein. Uh, we then digest the, the protein, typically using uh, an enzyme, say trypsin. And what we find is we create these nano MIP uh, structures around the protein, uh, around specific peptide sequences or uh, parts of the, the protein, which get trapped inside the MIP and are not subject to the digestion with the trypsin. Using elution conditions, we can then isolate those peptides and sequence them, and therefore understand which parts of the surface of a molecule are useful for molecular imprinting in particular. This total process, uh, including the mass spec sequencing for the, the peptide analysis, takes only one week of actual in the lab or hands-on time. In terms of results, uh, we've been working with first molecule here, human galactin-1. Uh, so the galactins are a family of beta-galactoside binding proteins uh, implicated in modulating cell-cell and cell matrix interactions. Uh, but one of the main uh, current interests around galactin-1 is actually uh, the link to the onset of sepsis in data and information published from the University of Connecticut earlier this year. Uh, in terms of antibodies commercially available, to galactin-1. Uh, there are two that we found where we had the sequences identified. So the antibody AB112525 
uh, which recognizes one sequence, and then the, the GAL1 MAB3, recognizing a sequence slightly near the middle of the molecule. Uh, our epitope discovery process found both those two as parts of bigger structures, but also two other epitopes that are clearly differentiated. Uh, we've listed the sequences here in the table. Uh, we've also got a schematic of the, the galactin molecule showing uh, the colors, uh, the sort of purple, the green, the yellow, and the orange are those particular epitopes and where they exist in the structure of the galactin. And obviously they're all relatively external, hence the imprinting uh, and the, the process has found externally presented sections of the molecule, uh, which we believe will be suitable for uh, binding molecule development and therefore for providing pairs of reagents to go with the existing antibodies. We also looked at gliadin. Uh, so gliadins are classified into four groups, uh, one of which is specifically linked to celiac disease, the alpha gliadin. Uh, and there's a very specific 33 mer peptide associated uh, directly with uh, celiac disease. Uh, using our process, we assessed a fairly crude composition of the different forms of uh, gliadin. Uh, and we found a number of the alpha uh, sequences Beta uh, were, were also discovered using the process. Uh, we compared that to the commercially available antibody, so antibody G12, uh, recognizing one specific sequence, an ABCAM antibody 1D5 for a deamidated form, an antibody A1 recognizing another sequence. Uh, our main alpha epitope overlaps with uh, you know, a number of the, those known epitopes. We did not find the A1 epitope. However, we believe that that is you know, uh, intrinsic to the, the formulations that we used. And if we'd chosen slightly different polymerization formulations, we may well have discovered that, that we, we could find that epitope during the process. But also it may equally be that that epitope is particularly antigenic for an immune response. Uh, and hence there is a, a good antibody against it. And as I say, with improvements or you know, modifications of our polymerization solutions, we, we may well have picked up that epitope. In conclusion, we believe that this new patented method from MIP Diagnostics has been shown to identify previously unknown epitopes and known epitopes, of course, on target biomolecules uh, we believe that these epitopes could be used to create either anti-peptide antibodies, aptamers, aphemers, or most preferably, because already the, the process is using molecular imprinting, we could create molecular imprinted polymers for diagnostic applications. We also believe that this process is revolutionary because it allows us, and in conjunction with potential customers, to start with the end in mind. Uh, to select epitopes in advance, as opposed to relying on the, the random lottery of an immune system and then having to retrospectively map uh, where antibodies bind to molecules using this sort of fairly traditional standard epitope mapping processes. I hope you found this uh, informative, uh, interesting, and would agree with us that this represents uh, a unique tool uh, for production or identification of suitable epitopes for diagnostic purposes. Thank you very much.